What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. In our previous video, we explained that even though the term Trinity is not in the Bible itself, the evidence for it is. Now with that said, within the Trinity, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, each equally God, each with a unique role perfectly fitting the others. So with that said, let's just dive right into this. The first member of the Trinity that we'll look at is God the Father. It's God the Father that sets the plans, has a will for our lives, and prunes us. Look at what Jesus said during his earthly ministry, Matthew chapter 15, verse 10 through 14. And he called the other people to him and said to them, Hear and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides, and if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. According to Jesus, we are planted by the Father. This particular statement Jesus made is explaining our relationship to God the Father. Look at what Jeremiah prophesied. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. This is God the Father speaking. We know this because it wasn't the word of God that came to Jeremiah and the word of God is Jesus. Look what Jesus testifies about the Father, Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. According to Jesus, it doesn't matter if we use our spiritual gifts or not. It only matters if we do the will of the Father. In other words, whether or not we allow the Father to plant us where we should be in order to dwell in His will. The Father plans and creates His will for us to dwell in. That is why it was the Father's plan that brought Jesus to earth 2,000 years ago and not Jesus' own will. For more details on that study, check out our video, The Love of the Father, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category or playlist. Now let's take a look at another aspect of the Father. Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 through 45 says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Jesus testifies that it is the Father who allows the sun to rise on both the evil and the good, as well as sending the rain on both the just and the unjust. Look at what the sun rising represents. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 through 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In other words, with each rising sun, God allows his mercy to fall upon all people. All people have the opportunity to be saved. Acts chapter 2 verse 21. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is Peter quoting Joel, saying that this prophecy has been fulfilled. No longer does God just give one opportunity to the righteous to be saved, but all people, anyone willing to call on Jesus' name and believe. That's the Father's connection to all of mankind. Everyone has the opportunity to be saved. It's not just those born in the church. It's not just those born in the West. It's not just those born to a specific race or ethnicity or nationality. It is anyone willing to accept the free gift of salvation. Now let's take a look at the Father's relationship with the church. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 through 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his sons ask him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent. If you who are evil then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Jesus tells us that when we follow him, our relationship with the Father changes and he now hears us when we ask something of him in Jesus' name. This can be seen in John's gospel as well. John chapter 16 verse 26 through 27. In that day, you will ask in my name. And I do not say that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believed that I came from God. 
once we were completely separated from God the Father, we had no connection to him, but now we have a mediator between us and him. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. We have Jesus Christ who opened the way for us to be able to go behind the curtain and approach the throne of grace ourselves. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 through 16. No longer does Jesus have to ask on our behalf. Now, because of his sacrifice, we can directly go to the Father. The only requirement is that we follow Christ and bear fruit. John chapter 15 verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. If you don't bear fruit, the Father won't hear. He won't answer your prayers. Instead, he will discipline you. John chapter 15 verse 1 through 11. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. We have to abide in Christ and bear fruit if we want the Father to hear us. We have no relationship with the Father without the Son. John chapter 14 verse 6. When we abide in Christ, the Father prunes us. He disciplines us so that we might grow in spirit and in truth. While you guys ponder these things, let's sum everything up real quick. The Father is the planner of our lives. It's his plan and his will that we must follow in order to receive our promised eternal salvation. This is because the Father is the planter. He will plant any willing person in the good life he has planned for them. The Father pours mercy out on all of us, believers and unbelievers alike. This is because he gives each person the opportunity to repent. Each person has the free will and choice to accept salvation. This is from the Father. The Father hears the prayers of all believers and answers them. He prunes them so that they might grow, convicting them of their secret sins within themselves, allowing them the opportunity to overcome. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. If you want to further grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website holdtohope.org or join our telegram channel Hold to Hope where you will receive an encouraging verse, quote and lyric of the day. If there's ever a video of ours taken down on YouTube that you want to see, it'll always be available on our website, telegram channel and rumble. So do with that information as you see fit and until next time, God bless.